Today, we are going to tell you a story about one of the coolest anvils ever. 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 The story of the Johnstown Bridge Anvil starts all the way back in the mid-1800s. 1852 to be exact is when the Cambria Iron Works Company set up shop in the middle of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The reason that Cambria Iron Works made its foundation here was the abundance of iron ore, wood, water supply, and coal that the region offered. When Cambria Iron Works established a foothold in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, its population was only about 5,000 people. As the steel mill grew, many people from Southern and Eastern Europe actually moved into Johnstown and started working in the steel mill and the coal mines. They settled in the area around Johnstown, still known today as Cambria City. Within the Cambria Iron Works facility, they had buildings such as the blacksmith shop, the foundry, the machine shop, the pattern maker shop, and these anvils were being produced to be used by the craftsmen at Cambria Ironworks. They weren't making these anvils to head to the market and sell to potential customers. They were actually being used by the craftsmen at Cambria. Cambria Ironworks didn't exactly invent the bridge anvil. Anvils of all different shapes and sizes have been made from all over the world in different styles. What it would allow you to do was place that material under the bridge portion of the anvil and still give you full working access to the face of the anvil. The story of my anvil started just a few years ago when I went and visited my friend Pat Quinn at the Center for Metal Arts in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The whole thing's probably all tool steel too. Oh yeah. And then this plate here. But yeah, that's probably that there to add it. Yeah. Yeah, it's on both sides. Yeah, I did. I made like shims for in here. Mm -hmm. Like once you get it real cleaned up, there's probably a little gap in there. Oh, you mean in the dovetail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see daylight on this side. Of it. My name's Pat, I'm the director of the Center for Metal Arts and uh, this is a not-for-profit forging school located in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And we, we teach workshops all throughout the year that range from beginner through advanced topics, anything from uh, tool making, traditional joinery, decorative ironwork, sculpture. We try to offer something that um, covers the broad range of what forging has to offer and uh, try to have workshops for everybody no matter what your skill set or interest in forging is.
Center for Metal Arts here in Johnstown is located in the historic Cambria Iron and Steel uh, landmark, and uh, it's a National Historic Landmark, the only uh, steel mill to be given that designation. And um, we occupy several of the old steel mill buildings here in Johnstown that date back to the 1850s and are proud to be the steward of, of the historic blacksmith shop of the Cambria Iron and Steel Company and the trustees of all the tools and equipment in that shop. Um, our goal is to turn that shop back into a fully functioning blacksmith shop uh, available to the artist blacksmith community to take advantage of the large scale uh, forging tools and equipment there. I'm psyched to find that anvil and uh, actually I found two of them in the past three weeks uh, right here in Johnstown within like a 10 mile radius um, and I went to see them because you know I've, I've never really seen anvils like that and then having moved to this shop this shop had um, six of those anvils in it when I got here um, so they're really like uh, representative of the of the steel mill in Johnstown and everything and um, so when I, if I find any around here I go go take a look at them because I'm interested in the heritage of the area and obviously the steel mill and the forging and all that kind of stuff and um, check these ones out and I I kind of refer to it as the Johnstown pattern you know because I've seen bridge anvils before but never with that dovetailed connection where the leg meets the body and I think that's like super unique about the bridge anvils that I found in Johnstown and really honestly quite inspiring for a lot of the work I've been trying to make recently um, but it's a super cool way of connecting those such large pieces of steel to make a really functional heavy-duty industrial anvil um, and because I've only seen them like that in Johnstown I kind of refer to it as a Johnstown pattern but um, they might exist somewhere else in the world, who knows, but uh, they're really special. Thickness here is different. Oh, you mean, oh, okay. So these, I think. Were forged separate, like? Yeah, or, you know, I see these as a big piece of square bar, with butchered, isolated, and drawn, and drawn out, out to okay. get that foot rather than like an upset corner. Ah. When you got a hammer, hammers like that, that yeah. takes nothing. And so they were all just handmade, you know, and that's why there's lots of variations in the stuff like that. You've had nine of these now, I guess, that you know of? There's in seven that I know of. Six are still here. Somebody took the other one. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as the ones you found, you said you found two other ones, which would be the one you just got for me, and then what was the other one? Somebody still else? At that guy's house. Oh, okay. This is one that has a date on it. Oh yeah. November 11th and I... If Thir you're real. 37 or something? 36? 33? I don't know. It's like yeah, something, something, mean, something in the mean? 30s, I think. But <laughs> they're pretty cool. I haven't found any other marks on any of them. You can see how they used to like, when the legs would get loose, they center punch. Oh yeah, yeah, they tried to tighten them up. Out, and then eventually they were just like, oh, screw it, weld it, uh. you know? This part is much taller before it transitions into the leg. It's harder to forge that. That's yeah. why these ones are a lot shorter. Uh, it's easy to just put a fuller yeah, in there right. and then draw that out.
shop in there. Was yeah, that's that little one we were looking at that's leaning up against the spot. You had it in the middle of the shop. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. And that was like bolted right to the concrete. So let's get down. We would like to thank today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Forgetting to get coffee and running out is the worst. With Trade, freshly roasted coffee arrives at your door on your preferred schedule. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's best local roasters. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and ships straight from the roastery at peak freshness. Let me explain how Trade works. Step one, take the quiz, answer questions about how you like your coffee, and Trade will curate matches just for you. Step two, Choose your delivery frequency and it'll appear at your doorstep, delivered at peak freshness so you never run out again. Step three, rate and repeat. Rate your matches so Trey can continue to delight you with the coffees you love. Our personal favorite this month is the Gotham Blend from Irving Farm. This blend was made right in the Hudson Valley in New York and delivered right to our door. I don't know about you, but during these cold winter months, I love starting the day with a fresh, hot cup of coffee. Gets me inspired, gets me fired up, and ready for the day. Trade guarantees that you will love your first bag of coffee, but if you don't, they will ship you out a brand new bag for free. The viewers of our channel will also get $15 off their first three bags of coffee. Just take the quiz by clicking the link in the description below. Free shipping is also included. This winter season, give the coffee lover in your life the gift of trade coffee. Now that we're back at the shop, I'm going to show you how I'm going to repair this anvil. Now this anvil is going to be a user anvil. It is staying here at the shop. I'm not selling it. I'm not giving it away. So I'm going to repair it the way I want to repair it. There are plenty of guides out there to show you how to repair an anvil properly. So without further ado, let me show you what we're going to do. Now obviously there's a lot of repairs that need to be done to this anvil, but to start things off, we're gonna go ahead and take these edges back with a hand grinder, get rid of any material that looks like it's loose or chipping or could break away in potential future, and we're gonna start with this hard facing rod. Again, this entire anvil is cast steel. It is not tool steel, it is not cast iron with a hardened top. The entire anvil is made out of the same material. Uh, the ones that we found here were Cambria Iron and Bethlehem. I've only found a date on one of the anvils and it was 1937. So at that point it would have been Bethlehem. Uh, but the two that I found recently are also really unique because this one that you guys got is, it came from U.S. Steel. There's a U.S. Steel plant in Johnstown as well as Bethlehem. and. Uh, they're cast in U.S. steel, these two that I found recently. So they're a little bit different. The ones that were made here in this shop were forged and these ones were cast. And they're like, uh, both of the ones that I found, well, this one in particular was given to the, the guy we got it from, from somebody at U.S. steel. So that's how he knows it came from U.S. steel. And the fellow that gave it to him said this was cast at U.S. steel. So that's 
all the information I have about it. And none of the bridge anvils have any identifying marks as far as like a, a logo of the mill or anything like that. Like I said, I only found the date on one. But having known that, it made me realize the other one that I saw was cast as well, which leads me to believe that that one also came out of the U.S. steel plant and not the Bethlehem plant. And so the ones we have here, there are six of them in this shop. The, through the research that I've done on them, they look forged and I've actually found some tooling, I think, that they use to forge those shapes. And certainly this blacksmith shop is adjacent to the machine shop, so it was no big deal to forge these shapes, send them over to the machine shop, have the dovetails cut out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but either way, Finding a bridge anvil that was manufactured in Johnstown, I think, is really special. I think it's getting tighter. Does that want to go the other way? No, it can't. This is rolled over. For a tough job like this, I can't recommend enough these Red Label Abrasives flap disc. I've chose the 40 grit to hog off as much material as possible. The most obvious repair that we're going to do to this anvil, as you can tell, the horn has been torch cut off at some point. A lot of the times on traditional anvils, the horn actually wasn't even hardened. The face of the anvil would be hard and the horn would be made out of whatever the body's made out of, maybe cast iron, cast steel. In this particular case, again, this anvil's all made out of the same material. We're not going to recast a horn, we're going to go ahead and forge it. The reason we're using H13 is an air hardening, very tough material. Probably doesn't even need to be H13, but we have it laying around and we're going to go ahead and use it.
We're gonna bevel the edges and we're gonna use the same hard facing rod that we used to fix the face to attach the horn to the existing anvil. Preheating and post heating as we go. Now for my favorite part, the final assembly. Oh yeah, we're I'm super excited about it. It's it's everything I was hoping it would be after we finished it. So I appreciate that very much. We put a lot of time into it and fixed it as best we thought was possible, you know, and we did everything the way we thought it would need to be done and I'm really happy with it. We forged on it, you know, it's not too crazy and yeah, it's just just what it needs to be. It's a user, it's not a showpiece, so it's great. Yep, back in working condition now. 
Once again, I would like to thank Pat Quinn for giving me the opportunity to be a steward of such a great anvil. And that anvil is not for sale, but these t-shirts are. If you head over to thatworks.shop right now and get yourself our brand new That Works merch. Thanks for watching, everybody. And thanks for watching this amazing anvil restoration video. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, that's okay. Tell us in the comments below what build you'd like to see this team build next. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Trade Coffee, and the link's in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. That works. Thank you.